service, even scientists and medical professionals are not immune to the ideological thinking of the vegetarians. They aren't immune. It's not a medical book. He may have written a diet book. I am very clear in my words. I don't mix words. And Dean, on which whatever his name is, may be very famous. I don't know him. I'm hearing him for the first time. I don't know. I yet ask him to prove and check whether that book is referred as a textbook. Not as a medical book, a text medical book in a college. That shows authenticity. He said, we should not worry about the cattle. Nature will take care. It is y'all who are so much worrying. We aren't worrying. Nature made them in such a way that the moment you kill them, they will again come. God is the creator. Allah made them. If we kill lion, tiger, they will become extinct. Therefore, we cannot have their food. The cattle, we can have. God has made them that way. If we don't follow the instruction of God, there will be overpopulation. And regarding cutting of plants, what he said, you know, people say that if you have plants, the mother is yet alive. So in that way, the offspring of the cow, of the goat, the calves, that means, can we cut them? Yes. The mother is yet alive. The cow is yet alive. And when the offspring becomes the mother, you can also kill the mother. So even if I agree with this logic, the plant survives. In the animals, more lives are surviving than the plants, if I agree with this logic. Furthermore, I said that best is prevention is better than cure. I agree with Dr. Ponish when he says that you know, vegetarian diet is helpful for certain diseases. Even I advise that. Where well, I said no. But the topic is not which food is healthier. But making a statement, it is banned for human beings. I challenge any authentic medical book. I'm a doctor, not books, whether given by Russia Foundation or Indian Vegetarian Congress, whatever it is. These books are stating things which are unfound, ill-tested, unproved. There is an Islamic method of prevention better than cure, which will answer most of your questions. The Islamic method is there of prevention better than cure. When we slaughter the animal, we do the zabiha. We cut the throat and the windpipe and the vessels of the neck without damaging the spinal cord. Otherwise, the nerve going to the heart may get severe, there may be cardiac arrest. When the spinal cord is not damaged and the vessels of the neck are slit open along with the throat and the windpipe, the heart is pumping, most of the blood flows out of the body. Blood is a very good media of germ and bacteria. If you slaughter the animal in this way, most of the disease transmitted by blood, many which you named, can be eliminated, can be prevented. The meat remains fresh for a longer time if it's slaughtered by the Islamic method. And people say, oh, it's so merciless. You know, you are so mercilessly killing, it dies of pain. When we slaughter the Islamic method, when we cut the blood vessels of the neck, the blood supply going to the nerve, which is responsible for pain, is severed. So the animal does not feel pain. The animal kicks and rithers. You know why? Due to the gush of flow. The animal doesn't feel pain. It is contracting and relaxing because there is lack of blood in that part of the body. The animal does not die of pain. It dies of painless death. Painless. Painless. We eliminate most of the disease transmitted by blood. Secondly, there are many countries in the world and many people who raise animals, they give them hormones. And one was mentioned by Mr. Zawir, he didn't name. It's called as DES, diacetylbisterol. It's a hormone injected to cattle so that they become fat and you get more money for flesh. This is haram in Islam. Carcinogenic hormones, if ingested in animal, even if you slaughter by the Zabia method, it is yet haram. It is Zabia but not halal. It is Zabia and haram. If the cattle are injected with hormones, you are not allowed to have those hormones. Neither are we allowed to have cows which are fed with non veg Because the Prophet said, any animal that is fed with non veg it is prohibited for you. <laughs> After that, if you take care of hygienic conditions and cook the meat very well, most of the diseases which Mr. Zaveri spoke, or not all, most of them will be eliminated. And in the non-veg flesh food, the most dangerous, which is commonly eaten, is pork. It has more than 70 different diseases which you can get if you ingest pork. More than 70 different diseases. And one of them is ischemic heart disease, which he spoke about. Because pork has more of 
fat building material than muscle building material, it gets deposited on the walls of the vessels causing atherosclerosis, hypertension, etc. That's the reason in the Quran, no less than four different places, in Surah Baqarah chapter number 2, verse number 173, in Surah Maida chapter number 5, verse number 3, in Surah Anam chapter number 6, verse number 145, and Surah Nail chapter number 16, verse number 115, it says, Hurrimat alaykumul maitutu waddamu wa rahmul khinzir. Mama ahuilla li gairil labi. Forbidden for you for food, ah, dead meat, blood, the flesh of swine, and any food on which any name besides God's name has been invoked. It's haram. So we abstain from it, and we prevent several diseases of non veg Quran says in Surah Taha, chapter number 20, verse number 81, eat of the food we have provided for you in sustenance, but commit no excesses therein. Most of the diseases, what Mr. Rashmi Bhai spoke about, is due to excessive eating. Even if you eat excessive veg food, you will have many diseases. I will not say, don't have veg food. I am a doctor. I am not an ideological, neither a fanatic non-vegetarian. So if you prevent eating in excess, most of the disease will be prevented. If you follow the Islamic guidelines, slaughter in the Islamic method, remove the blood, don't give hormones, cook the food very well, hygienic conditions, avoid pork, don't eat in excess, most of the disease can be prevented. It answers most of his arguments. Two are yet remaining. If time permits or in question answer time, if you ask, I will reply. Do you know that talking about healthy food, healthy food, talking about all research and experiments, I'll talk something which is a fact. According to Dr. William, again very famous person, Dr. William, he says that vegetarian food extends the life of a human being for more than six years. If you have veg food, as compared to non-veg food, you will live six years longer. Again, hypothesis. Hypothesis. If you analyze, a data was collected about all the people who lived above 100 years from 1932 to 1952. And on this data, a person by the name of O. Sijaris, he wrote a book, Living to be 100, 1,200 people who did and why they did it. Everything is mentioned. In it, even diet is mentioned. Do you know out of 1,200 people, how many were vegetarian? How many? Guess. 1,000. Four! 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 This survey wasn't done to prove veg food or non-veg food. It was done for other reasons, but even the diet was mentioned. It's a fact. It's not a research. It's a fact. Out of 1,200 people who lived in the span of 20 years, over 100 years, only four were vegetarian. You know alcohol? Alcohol alone. It is a veg diet or not? Alcohol is veg or non-veg? Veg! From juices of fruits. And the disease that are caused by alcohol alone is more than all the non-veg disease put together. One vegetable diet. So just for alcohol, I cannot say that all vegetable foods should be banned. Today, scientists, and he'll agree, it's mentioned in these books also, the cause of maximum death in the world today is alcohol number one. So I don't ban all veg food. What do I say? As Quran says, Surah Maida chapter number 5, verse number 90. Ya yolidin amanu, innam al khamru al maithuru, wal anzabu al aslamu, rishtum minam al shaitan, fashtanibu lalakum taflihun. That, oh, you believe? Verily intoxicants and gambling and idol worship and education of stones and the vanishing of arrows, these are Satan's handiwork. Abstain from it that you may prosper. Alcohol is a Satan's handiwork. Abstain from it. I only private alcohol, not all veg food. And smoking. Second greatest cause of death in the world. Veg or non-veg? Veg. Can you prevent the alcoholic disease? Only way you can prevent is defermented. It ceases to be alcohol. Can you prevent smoking disease? Don't have tobacco. Only option is prohibition. If there is no prevention, then comes the question of prohibition. So alcohol is prohibited. There are more than 400 fatwas by Islamic scholars. Smoking is prohibited because there is no prevention. You know Kesri Dal? Kesri Dal? Indian government has banned it. It causes spastic paraplegia. Staple food of Northwest Indians. Banned. Why? It causes death also. Spastic paraplegia. Alcohol. Many countries have banned, including Saudi Arabia, including states in India have banned it. Smoking in Singapore is banned in public places, in government places, in public transport. 
cases are banned by India. If there is no prevention, then you can ban it. I do not know of a single government that has banned all non-veg food in general. Not a single. Yes, few non-veg food like pork, Saudi Arabia has banned. There is no prevention, ban it. If there is no prevention, then you prohibit it. And the debate was not which is better, which is healthier, veg or non-veg. The debate was is non-veg food permitted or prohibited. I gave a list of more than 20 points. So I can very well say that Mr. Rashmi Vazavari conveniently stopped this talk five minutes before, not to answer these things. If you give me one hour more, I will continue speaking. Wild berries, they are poisonous. Strychnine, vegetable food, they are poisonous. Datura, poisonous. What is the solution? Don't have it. You know, water. Water has so many diseases transmitted. Cholera, paratyphoid, typhoid. It causes amoebiasis, giardiasis, roundworm, pinworm, wild hepatitis. I can go on talking. Only by water. What do you do? Do you ban water? You prevent it. You purify the water. The disease will be prevented. You know milk. Milk has so many diseases. Shigella, cholera, paratyphoid, typhoid, tuberculosis, salmonellosis, brucellosis. I can go on listing. What do you do? Do you ban milk? What do you do? You pasteurize it. You don't ban it. You don't prohibit it. It's unmedical. Whether milk is non-veg or veg is a debatable topic. <laughs> I won't argue on that. So if you cannot prevent the disease, then do you prohibit it. I have given various reasons, which Mr. Rasmus Devi hasn't replied. There's not a single government who has banned non-veg food in general. There's not a single major religion which has banned non-veg food in general. Therefore, I say that non-veg food is permitted, not prohibited. If I have heard the feelings of any vegetarians while giving the replies to the speaker, I sincerely apologize from the bottom of my heart. I would like to end the talk by giving the quotation of the glorious Quran from Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 81, which says, وَقُلْ جَالْ حَقُّ وَزَاكَ الْبَاطِلِ إِنَّ الْبَاطِلَ كَانَ زَهُكَ When truth is heard against falsehood, falsehood perishes. For falsehood is by its nature bound to perish. وَآخِرُ الدَّعْوَانَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ